Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Have you ever wondered why some of the small businesses in your community seem to be very well known? And you might even assume that they do a lot of business or maybe you do see them do a lot of business and you're like, wow, how did they become so well known? And here I am busting my butt, working just as hard, but for some reason, everybody seems to know about them. Well, they probably are using a secret to help grow their business that a lot of people don't take advantage of. And that is, they have made some strategic partnerships. And one of the best people that you can make a strategic partnership with in your small community are the local realtors. Now hear me out, because I wanna explain why I think that these people are some of the best that you could ever make a partnership with. First off, if you think about a realtor, what are they doing? They're in the business of selling selling homes or helping people buy homes. When they're selling a home, they have a homeowner, right? And that homeowner has some honeydew lists, some things around the house that they're going to need done. In which case, they're gonna to have to reference out some local people to help get that done. Then when they sell the home, then there's an inspection period and even more items come back, in which case, once again, here's a list of things that need to get done and they have to make some referrals out as well. Now, if I'm have, representing a buyer, as a buyer's agent, one of the things I'm gonna have to do is recommend local people to help do their inspections and to get different things done that way. Then once they move in, there's some projects that they wanna get done and they're gonna ask me, who do I recommend here in town? I'm gonna give those out. But if you keep in mind, that relationship actually lasts a little bit longer as well because when they first move to a town, especially if they've never been there before, they don't know who to use. So they continually reach out to the realtor asking, hey, do you happen to know somebody who can do A, B, or C? In which case, as realtors, we give out those numbers. I took a phone call yesterday from somebody, for example, asking if I knew somebody who could do interior painting. And I helped this person buy a house like two, three years ago, but they thought they would save some time and give me a call. This happens all of the time. But here's the really cool thing about partnering with realtors is think of like a tree trunk, will you? When you have a tree trunk, that's the realtor. The first branches that come off are going to be their immediate people that they recommend you to, the, the homeowner, the seller, the buyer, whatever the case may be. But then what happens is there's more branches that come off of that tree trunk because you've got the branches and then you've got the smaller branches. And those are the people that those buyers and those sellers, they fall in love with you. They now recommend you out to their family, friends, and other people as well. So that, it, But it all started because of that, the roots that you created with that realtor. But it doesn't end there. As a realtor, especially the ones that sell more homes than most, what happens is other agents will reach out to you saying, hey, who do you recommend for A, B, or C? In which case, now we're recommending them out again. And next thing you know, you become the preferred person for that particular realtor. Now, what I don't want you to do is think, oh, well, Tammy, I have a business that doesn't service homes. I don't go into homes. I don't fix things and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. People will ask all the time, hey, who's who do you recommend for a nail salon? Who do you recommend for cleaning my clothes? Who do you recommend for whatever? It could be a brick and mortar. It could be you know, someone in a mobile business that comes to their house or somewhere they want to go take, for example, their dogs. Who should I use for my dogs? And we give out those names. And typically who we give out are the people that we know are going to take care of our clients. If you think about it, as a realtor, everything is based off of trust and influence. So when you are making those recommendations, you are going to recommend people that you know are going to take really good care of your clients. Because what you don't want to have happen is that to come back and bite you in the butt. Going, you recommended so-and-so and so-and-so was horrible. They had terrible customer service. They never got back to me and all that. That's not what a realtor, that's not the type of person that a realtor is going to recommend. They're going to recommend somebody they know they can put their trust and their faith in to help their clients. So I want you to think about your business because almost every single business can partner with a realtor. Now I hear some of you asking, Tammy, that's great. How do I partner with realtors? Well, the first and easiest one is if you have any brokerages in your town, go visit them at the brokerage. But I want you to keep in mind something. A lot of times this does not work. So many realtors now work from home. They never go to an office and a brokerage could have 50, 60, 100 people and none of them ever go there. So that's really not gonna work. The days of dropping off cookies only gets you in front of a couple of people. It really doesn't have the impact. What I recommend is that you do a couple different things. If you go into that brokerage, if they have business cards, grab those business cards. I recommend 
that if there's open houses, you just stop by and you introduce yourself, let them know that you're there. By the way, I want you to keep something in mind. People are going to tell you they have somebody. Realtors, once again, are very loyal. What you want to do is you want to become their number two. Don't start the conversation off saying, hey, I've got this pool cleaning business. Will you recommend me? What I want you to do is go in there and say, hey, I know you probably already have somebody who does pool cleaning that you recommend, but can you please just at least put me in your phone as a backup person just in case to have another person? Because if you become their number two, at some point, number one's going to screw up. And once again, if a realtor's number one passion is to make sure that people are taken care of, that number one could get themselves into hot water, start doing a poor job, and then all of a sudden number two becomes number one. You just want that shot with them. So I want you to introduce yourself through its open houses, but when you drive by signs, stop, get the phone number off of the sign. Typically that's gonna be directly to the selling agent. And you can reach out to them and say, hey, these are my services. If you happen to need it while you're selling this home, please give me a call once again, or be number two. You can also start a database where you start reaching out to everybody once a month, just letting them know about your services. I can tell you that the vast majority of people that I recommend, it started off either as a relationship, I met them through networking, or I met them because they did reach out and they continually reached out. And eventually when I had a need for them, I'm like, oh, so-and-so, that's who I need to recommend because I don't have somebody, these people can do it. Um, you know, so I, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. The key is if you can get yourself three, four, five really good realtors, and by the way, they do not have to be the most successful realtors in your town. They just have to have influence. So even if they sell mediocre number of houses, but yet they still talk to a lot of different people, those are just as valuable to you. Now, word of caution, because this gets a lot of people in trouble, is as their business starts to grow and blow up, they forget about that realtor. But remember what happens to that tree. The minute you stop planting and watering that, that tree and feeding it, it's going to wither up. And what's going to happen is if that realtor all of a sudden realizes that you become too big for your britches, if you will, and you no longer can help their clients, they're going to stop referring you. And what's going to happen is the first thing that's going to go is they're not going to recommend you to their clients. Then they're not going to recommend you to other agents. And then those clients aren't going to recommend you either because they never had a chance to use you. So it's really important that you stay on top of your really strong relationships, whether they're a realtor or they're not. Because a lot of times I see people blow up their business and get really good. And then all of a sudden they stopped taking care of the people that brought them to the party, if you will. I don't need you to kiss their butt. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is never let the quality and your customer service and your communication go down once you start to get bigger. And for those of you that doubt this, I'm telling you, I have watched so many small businesses blow up overnight or over the course of a year. They are hustling. Don't get me wrong. That person, that business owner is busting their butt and working very hard, but they got a little bit of a leg up because they partnered with the realtors in their town and it made a huge difference. And I'll promise you, if you start thinking about all the different people in your town that really have made a name for themselves, they probably have some really strong roots in with the realtor community. And by the way, realtors always need extra people. So don't ever think that, oh, I can't get that agent because they have so-and-so. Go back to what I said, be number two, be number three, just get on the list. When I think about those painters, yes, there might be a painter that I recommend, but I always give them out two, three options of other people. And sometimes I don't, even, I've never used the other person. I'll just say, hey, I've never used them, but I've heard some really good things about them. So it's important that you get that out there. So whatever you do, tap into this best practice that a lot of successful agents have and start partnering with realtors in your local community, I think you're going to find that it makes a huge difference. I do want to hit one important topic. Sometimes I'll get people that'll say, you know, I partnered with my realtor and all they want is it for cheap or they want it for free or whatever. You know, if a realtor doesn't value your service, then just move on to the next realtor. Not everybody is like that. I'm not like that. If anything, I try to help people price better than what it is because sometimes they're giving away their services and they don't need to be doing that. But at the same time where it ticks off a realtor is if you're charging them 80 bucks and then the next day it's 150 for the same service, you got to kind of like realize, okay, I need to step back because they're probably telling their clients the price I just gave them yesterday. So make sure you give your realtor a lot of heads up if you're going to start changing your prices because that can create a problem. And are there realtors that are going to try to beat you down for the best, cheapest price? Absolutely. There are going to be some. I don't do that, but I do know there are some. That's okay. Move on to the next set of realtors. If that realtor is not a good fit for you, don't use them. There's no one saying that you have to do it, but I promise you, realtors are a dime a dozen. There's all kinds of them out there. Some of them appreciate you. Some of them don't. It's just like any other profession. So just 
pick the ones that you know or value you for what you are and build those relationships. Don't get hung up on the ones that are trying to nickel and dime you or treat you like crap. Don't work with them. Um, I would never tell you to do that. So that's some of the feedback that I get from people whenever this topic comes up. And I want you to know you don't need to use them. All right, with that, go take care of this best practice. Go start made, making a commitment to go out and, and touch bases with about three, four, five realtors and see if you can start building a relationship with them and building your business up. It's a fantastic way for you to be able to get your name out there and have that name recognition and having people out there recommending you left and right. And by the way, if you want to learn more about how you can actually lose customers, but get more profit, then check out this video over here. I think you're going to like it.